What is the single most devastating thing someone has said to you? It was when my grandmother called me at 11 at night and said that my mom was basically at a point where we could either pull the plug or try to give her a comfortable life as a vegetable, and that my dad had decided to pull the plug. When I had been chatting to a very close internet friend, he mentioned he was going to have an operation, and that he'd be back in a week. A month later, he finally came back, except it wasn't him. It was his sister, telling me that he'd passed away and wanted to tell me that I was weird and fun and a person he could talk about anything to. I cried right there reading it, because we would have met in summer. I still look at his profile sometimes and wish that his icon will turn green, and he'll come back. I don't think I ever loved you she told me on my birthday after admitting she'd been cheating on me with some guy from one of her classes. That was a bit of a rough semester. You're not enough. Said to me when I was a child by my mother as I was trying to convince her not to commit suicide. Ouch. Hope everything is okay now. The conversation between me and my brother when he told me he had cancer. I asked him how his follow up doctor's appointment was and he just goes well that's why I came over. Not good. He died last year. I'm sorry for your loss. You're exactly the kind of person I hate the most. Said by my father. I was 15. A roommate once told me you think you're funny, but you're just a freaking idiot during an argument. While very harshly put, it really hit me in my insecurities, because I generally joke around a lot and make people laugh. Thing is once the loathing of someone starts to set in, everything they say is wrong. Comma man, I could go for a burger right about now. Yeah, I bet you could yeah. See, shake it off. It's the hetero version of falling out of love. Before I was born my mom had a miscarriage before she had me, so when I was I think 9 or 10 I did something wrong in school like got detention or something. I remember coming home and getting an ano argument with my mom and she said to me, I wish I had the other baby instead and that you were the miscarried one. I still am distant a bit to my own mom because of that and haven't forgiven her 14 years later. Similar to this, getting bad grades at school and overhearing my parents quietly discussing having another baby because I wasn't turning out well. We tried everything, but she's lost so much blood we just can't save her, as the monitor flatlined and my 11 year old sister, who was laughing and playing with me 24 hours before, was pronounced dead. You ruin my happiness said to me, by my mum when she was pee off. It was ages ago and we get along great now but frick it still hurts. I think we should see other people, I'm not ready to settle down, said by my former fiance while I was about 6 months pregnant. Oh, I don't care about you, you're good to study with but make no mistake, I don't give a crap about you as a person, but someone who, until then, I'd considered my best friend at law school. I'd confided in him about the domestic abuse I was experiencing in first year. We'd talked about our similar mental health issues, and had spent countless hours pulling all-nighters and studying. He said this in our second year. Definitely sounds like lawyer material. When I was living in Shanghai I was having a decent day. The sky was as blue as it can be. What with the pollution. And I had just gotten a nice apartment downtown. It was the first good day if had in months actually. Things just seemed easy. That said, during work I got one of the most bulls phone calls of my life. You'll have to move your things by the end of the day. I came back and there were a bunch of police pushing people out of their apartments. I grabbed my things and made my dong of a landlord refund my deposit. The next day the building was bulldozed. It was the timing of it that made those words so devastating. I had just gotten out of a crappy relationship. My mom had been paralyzed and my grandmother died all within the span of a month. Then I get a phone call telling me that some cockwithel decided that I no longer have a home. Defeated was the word I would use to describe how I felt. You got shanghaied. My mom was actively going to commit suicide and said, if I go, I can't leave you three behind. To me and my two siblings, we were all under 10 years old, I was 4. Luckily my brother called the police and told them she was planning a murder suicide. After my dad was diagnosed with brain cancer and given only about 3-4 months to live, he stopped taking my calls completely. I was confused, so I flew out to see him. He sat me down in the living room and said he never wanted to see me again. 
he was choosing to surround himself with positive people his new wife and to stay away from him. That is girl, devastated. My mom told me once, when I was 11, that when I smile I look constipated. Now I can't smile without feeling stupid, and so I try not to smile at all. Even though it was just a small comment and barely even a sentence, it was probably the most devastating thing anyone's ever said to me because I took it to heart as a self-conscious preteen. My mother always said that my smile was a Chandler smile. I know it's a joke but I rarely smile in photographs anymore. If anything I closed mouth smile but taking pictures has become anxiety inducing bc of one teasing comment. When asked during a fight with my college boyfriend if he even saw a future with me, we had been together a year and a half and had spoken of marriage at this point. No, because I don't think you would make a good mother because you aren't affectionate enough. My mother agrees. Been years, and it still gives me doubts if I would make a good mom. Honestly, I think you dodged a bullet. You'd always be second fiddle to mommy with that dude. My ex-wife, when leaving me, for a married man, who was in the country on a marriage visa, agreed to one session with a therapist counselor. There, she said she's not sorry for doing what she's doing, and that she's happy with her actions. Oof, what a gut punch. Now, I don't believe in aliens, per se, but if I was half a hair crazier, I would have swore up and down this was some kind of invasion of the body snatches scenario going on. Something inside her switched. We were together for 12 years, and for for the first 11.5, she was amazing and then something just changed. I've also learned just recently that either some people can change dramatically in next to no time at all, or they're very good at hiding their authentic selves. I'm sorry you had to experience that. When I was a child I was hit by a car, leaving me with quite bad scarring to my face and shoulder. My parents, and especially my mum, always encouraged my self esteem and they always brought me up when I was sad about it. However, when we were children, my mum was quite physically and verbally abusive towards me and my sisters. She's always categorically denied anything of the sort took place. Once, I built up the courage to talk to her about it, to try to understand what was going on. She was gaslighting me so I brought up the fact that the proof was on my skin. From the time she scarred me by throwing a brush and dustpan at me in a rage. Her response? Well, considering the amount of other scars you have all over you, I don't think a small one on your knee should be the one you're worrying about. I mean, yeah, it's small compared to the rest. But it was done on purpose, out of malice. What really hurt me was after a lifetime of her telling me not to worry about the scars. They are not noticeable. You're beautiful anyway. She was willing to throw my deepest insecurity back in my face rather than own up to something she's ashamed of. It freaking hurt and it feels good to have written it out. A few small words spoken in haste can undo years of feelings. I'm sorry. When my best friend of 7 years and girlfriend of a year told me she slept with her ex who I've had problems with constantly. I was young and had no idea how to process it. It was also the day I moved into my dorm in college, and had to try to stay friendly while meeting new people. Ended up leaving her at my house while I left. Didn't see her again for 3 months. Over it now but, my god, that was the worst day of my life. My boyfriend broke up with me the day I moved into university. He couldn't handle the thought of me living with boys. A few weeks later he begged me to get back with him and I did for a while until I found out he'd got another girlfriend. I left him and found myself a rebound. He tells me he'll always love me and I tell him I'll always resent him for ruining for first month at university. The pregnancy screen came back as high risk for Down syndrome. He turned out perfectly healthy, but god dang I was scared for a while. Dang, that hits home. We were told 15% chance and it was truly terrifying. We were lucky too. Probably going to get buried, but he's dead. Get over it. I was about 10 or 11 when my only friend told me to get over the death of my father. He committed suicide when I was 6. That's harsh. At the same time, it's an age where he himself might have not been able to comprehend the situation. Hope you're doing well now regardless. My condolences dated someone when I was 24, really into them. Basically they didn't want to commit to me because I didn't have a car or my own apartment, and they only dated people with a nice car and a nice apartment. 
which at the time I thought was fair. So I tried my best to move out and get some wheels. Mind you I live in NYC so it's not as easy as it would be in other states. So I graduated and all while going to school I was still with this girl. Because I thought she was motivating me. We would meet each other's family, friends, go to dinner, and weddings etc. Make long story short one day I finally asked why we aren't together. Basically she tells me that her ex was this big time entrepreneur that introduced her to a certain lifestyle. And while she thought I was cool it would never work out because I never gave her what he could. That crap really hurt. But it made me a better person to man up and realize how toxic that relationship was. When I was about 10 and my grandfather looked me in the eye and said Jason, you can do anything you set your mind to, but you won't. I come from a long line of alcoholics, drug addicts, and all around screw ups that also happen to be incredibly smart. It became this ever present message in the back of my head. Also my name is in fact not Jason. This thread really puts into perspective how you just never know what someone has been through and how important it is to be kind to each other. My grandma called me on my birthday to tell me that my grandpa passed away. I guess that's why I don't like celebrating birthdays. Asking my ex did you cheat? He replied with a simple straight face no. Felt my heart break on the spot because I knew he did cheat. His then best friend actually gave me the heads up as to what was going on. The obvious lie is the worst. It just shows how little respect they have for you. I hope you are in a better place now. Comma you have an addiction to painkillers. I want you out of the hotel tomorrow. No, I wasn't addicted. I got third degree burns a week before and I was taking painkillers. Following the prescription to a T. Also it was a hotel room I had paid for. Also he was my partner of 6 years and had just told me about his infidelity a couple hours earlier. Also we were staying at the hotel because we lost everything in the fire. Also he'd stolen all of the money out of my bank account. So I had nowhere to go, no money, and I needed someone to take me to my skin graft surgery in a day. He was supposed to take me. His dad gave me a ride to my dad's place, whom I was estranged from. Holy frick I don't think it's possible to be a worse person than that. Well, that might not be a bad lesson for you to learn. I was working as a general manager for one of my father's many businesses. Occasionally I would skip taking a paycheck in order to keep more cash flow in the business. I basically only took a paycheck when I needed the cash and kept track of the balance owed to me. I knew that at some point in the future I would receive all of the cash I had deferred. One day my fiance became ill. A couple months later she died of cancer. She left behind four children, two young adults, two minors. I promised her that I would care for and look after them. I stayed true to my promise at great cost and expense. After a year of taking over her house payments and doing all I could to provide a normal life for her devastated children, I was having a difficult time keeping my head above water financially. I knew that I had around $45,000 in deferred funds from my job so I decided to approach my father about getting a portion. $20,000 of what was owed to me. I sat down with him and explained the situation. After finishing he looked at me and said, Why are you taking care of her kids? You don't owe them anything. I said, I agree. I don't owe them anything. But I owe an awful lot to their mother. My sweetheart. He then said, What would happen if I don't give you your money? I told him that we would most likely lose the house and be forced out onto the street. He sat back in his chair and responded with, well, that might not be a bad lesson for you to learn. I sat there in shock. When I came to my senses I was forced to beg, cry, plead, threaten, etc. In order to get my money. Finally, after he had dragged me over the coals long enough, he relented and cut me a check. As I drove home afterwards I tried to put myself in his shoes. All I could think about was how proud I would be to have a son who would do something as honorable as caring for the well-being of the children of his deceased sweetheart. It was at that point I decided to limit my contact with my father. I vowed to have no contact with him ever if possible. Life is too short to be around people who manipulate and drag you down. From then on I only spoke to him a couple of times and it was strictly business related. Nothing personal ever again. Six months later the business was sold. I got the balance of the money owed to me at that time. Three years later he passed away. I didn't attend his funeral. In fact, 
That night I was with him asking for money owed to me was the last time I ever saw him. No regrets. Goddammit you are a good person. When I turned my 2 weeks notice in at my current job, I got a job in welding, which I went to school for. My female co-workers all told me I would never make it in a male dominated industry and I would be begging for my job back. Thanks for the vote of confidence, B. I hate how that kind of mentality gets in the way of more women entering the trades. It's perpetuated by both the men in industry as well as the rest of the population as a whole. I have yet to cross paths with a tradeswoman who not only pulls her weight, but also excels at their work. TL. DR. I had the normal issues adolescent daughters have with their moms but mine was always a bit cold and distant. One day, with tears in her eyes, she verbally acknowledged that she didn't quite do her best as a mother and apologized. I realized I had been selfish and unfair, and that my mom is a human like me. I always had a lot of pent up resentment towards my mom for a lot of reasons. Some petty, some not so petty. Recently I graduated from college and turned 25 and kind of realized my mom is just a person, like me, who tried and messed up sometimes. Luckily, I'm the wallflower, suffer in silence type, so I never really brought those resentments to my mom's attention. But once in a while I'd say something I thought was no big deal and she'd get very defensive and angry. Anyway, I was visiting from college at one point, and I guess I said one of those things. Probably referring to how I used to do poorly in school as a kid due to undiagnosed ADHD and lack of structure, and she didn't get mad this time. Her eyes filled with tears, but she kept them there, and said I could have been a better mother. I was good, but I didn't try hard enough and I know I could have done better, and I'm sorry, that just killed me for a couple reasons, but the main one was that's how I felt in school growing up, that I could try harder and I was letting people down. It was the first time I realized her and I struggled with the same things, and she felt she had failed me just like I used to feel I had failed her. There were many hugs after that conversation. I have an absent father. When I was 20, my friends and I went to a tarot card reader just for fun. She read mine and said, you do not have a father, just the finality of her statement and that it was coming from a stranger really shattered me. I couldn't stop crying. This is when I was younger and more affected by it. I'm nearly 30 now and feel very indifferent about him. But boy, I wasn't ready for her to say that. LOL. Gosh, that tarot reader must have felt really crappy and unlucky. Quite the story though. Pregnant at my 32 week checkup. He, the baby, hasn't moved in 30 minutes and there is very little fluid. You need to be admitted now. Followed by it's too dangerous for you to travel the 30 minutes to the tier 3 Niku hospital. You need to deliver here and the baby will be transported after. But I had to stay at the first hospital. Son was born weighing 2 pounds and spent 35 days in the Niku. He's 2 now and very happy, though still small. My mom had me at 28 weeks. I am in my 20s and I'm quite tall. I'm sure everything will be okay. Not me but my dad received a phone call from the doctor when my grandfather died and she said, Doctor, hello sir, your father has entered cardiac arrest. We are performing CPR as we speak however your father is a very old man. He is very frail. He has not been responsive to our compressions. It is my professional opinion that your father is dying in fact there is a high chance that he is already dead. If we were able to bring him back it is my professional opinion that he would never be a fully functioning person again. To be quite frank sir, the only thing I think CPR is doing right now is cracking his ribs. Would you like us to continue? Dad, just stop. Doctor, time of death is 3.53pm. Thank you sir click. My dad was flying home from a job interview. This is freaking devastating. I can't imagine getting that phone call about my dad. I was very chatty as a young child. Aged 6 or 7. Our class was getting onto a bus to leave a school trip. As the bus was filling up, I had a free space next to me. Our teacher saw the space and said you're too noisy. I'm not sitting next to you. And found another seat. Sitting on my own. I cried my eyes out for most of the journey home. From memory, she was a lovely person the rest of the time, so I'm not sure if it was meant to be a joke, but I didn't see it that way at the time. Still find it a bit awkward starting a conversation with people. 
It may seem like something super minor now, but at the time, it just freaking wrecked me with how much someone can be hung up on the little things. I came home with my report card one day from middle school. It was my second best report card ever. It was all as and one B. I came home like jumping up and down excited on it. I showed my parents and my dad was really happy for me. I showed my mom and she said in a condescending tone what's with the B I went from super excited to super depressed. It literally made me feel like I got an F instead of an B. My dad just snaps at her saying lay off him. It's a B. It's not bad. I've gone from mildly happy to down. Down to lower. But that was the first and only time I went from super excited from something to low. Let me tell you. That gap is freaking real and devastating. It sucked. I tried to look past your outward appearance. I did. But it turns out who you are on the inside is exactly the same as who you look like you'd be. For context. I am a huge dude with long hair and tattoos up my neck. I rarely smile. As a girl with resting B face and tattoos this would be a gut punch because I imagine myself to be a generally good person. My best friend had been missing since the day before. Another friend called me. Are you sitting down? Yes. They found him. I started crying and didn't stop. He had committed suicide. I am still devastated. Two and a half years later. Your sister died this morning. I'm so sorry. Got a frantic call from my mom who was so hysterical she couldn't form proper sentences. So the put me on with her boyfriend and that's what he told me. Turns out he was so sorry because he was passed out drunk one room away and could have saved her if he'd woken up. Since then, we helped him get into rehab twice and helped him get sober. Saving his life. He was in early stages of liver failure. To which he promptly showed his appreciation by emptying out their bank account and running off with another alcoholic he met in AA. Oh, and all this while my mom was out of work because she was so sick and distraught. Turns out she got hepatitis from a patient stabbing her with a dirty needle. Had to leave my job and move her a few states away to be around more family. Frick you, Matt, you piece of garbage. If I ever see you again, it would take every ounce of restraint I have not to break every bone in your face. My father suddenly had a severe case of cerebral bleeding and was in a coma. I was there the morning of his bleeding and gave him CPR with my brother, because B had vomited and we were worried that it would choke him. He was taken to a hospital and put into the Iku where he stayed there for 10 days. I study away from home and I was home on a long weekend so I had to return to school due to my school's strict absence policies. After the 9th day I receive a call from my brother, he said dad just got a heart attack. They resuscitated him, but he's brain dead now. Come back as soon as possible so they can take him off life support and we can say goodbye to him. He died the next day, the 11th of April, 2017, after I had seen him and said my goodbyes. RIP dad, I'll always miss you. Okay, my, ex, wife in response to me saying I think we should separate during a fight. I don't know why I said it. I think I had just burnt out in that moment. But the calm in her voice when she said it made me realize instantly that she had already thought it through way more than I did. My dad. I had brought home my now husband to meet the family. Hubby is a hottie. I definitely married up. Dad calls me and asks if we were serious. I said of course otherwise I wouldn't have brought him home. Next words out of my dad's mouth were, Gina, you need to drop some weight if you are gonna be with him. Insinuating that I was gonna lose him cause I'm a fatty. After we married and my dad comes to visit he still spoils my husband. I feel like it's his way of saying thanks for marrying my fat daughter. I brought home a serious BF, who became my first husband, and my father said to him, I don't know why you're with her, you could do better. It's probably hard for you to relate because you've never been hit on by anyone lolTF. I might have posted about this before on a similar thread, but when, during a fight, my mom yelled I wish I had aborted you. Before she became pregnant with me, she was a drug addicted homeless person who was estranged from her own parents. After she gave birth to me, she got a house, a job, and got her life on track. My birth is probably the only reason why she's still alive, and she wishes it had never happened. I remember when I was a teenager mum yelling I hate you so much I wish you'd never been born while throwing plates at my head. Can't remember what I'd done to pee her off though. 
you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.